Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Infinite Omega with me, Lactatha. Once again, we are back with yet another returning target. This is Elusive Target number 23, The Surgeons, Year 2. Having skipped Hitman 2 altogether, they are making their long-awaited debut in Hitman 3. Let's check out that briefing. Good evening, 47. Your targets are Dr. Pavel Friedel and Dr. Akane Akanawa, brilliant and unethical transplant surgeons. Both were involved in performing an operation on a billionaire's son. However, the organ had been sourced illicitly in Central Africa, and the patient died of hemorrhagic fever shortly after. We have located the targets at Gamma in Hokkaido, where they are key members of staff and will enjoy a great deal of freedom of movement and protection within the facility itself. The client offers a substantial bonus if the targets are eliminated in a manner appropriate to the death of their patient. As you know, the Gamma facility has worked with infectious diseases, so you should be able to find something useful on site. And I know you appreciate poetic justice. The clock is ticking, 47. Good luck. Ah, so just like with the ex-dictator, we again have two targets to kill. They are Pavel Friedel and Kenny Akinawa. And we've got the added optional objective of killing them both with the hemorrhagic virus. I think we can manage that, and in doing so, we've got a couple methods for you today. Starting with method number one, which will require having full level mastery in Hokkaido. If you don't have this, not to worry, method number two has got you covered. Now, while we'll still be starting in the default location, level mastery will allow us to bring along either some disposable scramblers or electronic key hackers. They both do the same thing. And while they're not essential, also bringing along the remote emetic gas device and smuggling in a secret one in the morgue storage area will really help us save some time later. With these in hand, let's dive in. But before we get started, for those that don't know, elusive targets are a limited time available one-shot only mission type. Once you've eliminated even one of your targets or completed an objective, you are locked in and can no longer restart or replan. Also, don't get yourself killed, as this will result in mission failure and you won't be able to play again. But if you follow along with the methods in this video, you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. Also, if you do happen to find this video helpful or enjoyable, please leave a like down below, and if you haven't already, do subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new videos in the future. So, as soon as the mission begins, we'll go ahead and skip the intro. Now, we're going to make our way out of our room and head outside to the courtyard, making our way to the far back corner here, climbing down the ledge and sliding all the way down the pipe to hop through the window. Now that we're back inside, head into the hallway and up the stairs to the morgue, making sure to crouch down when entering the room to avoid being spotted by the morgue doctor. Taking the door on the left, we'll continue across this room, where we're going to need to use one of the key hackers to gain access to the stem cell lab. Inside, we'll find the two hemorrhagic syringes needed to meet the special kill condition. Leave this room and take a right through to the next door. If you smuggled in the secret one, it can be retrieved from this room here. Now we'll head up the stairs by one level, where we'll see a guard standing just on the other side of the door here. At this point, depending on if you did or didn't bring along the Seeker 1, this kill may involve a bit more waiting, and right now the first of our targets should just be standing at the far end of the hall. But the problem we have to deal with is this guard right in front of us. He'll start to walk away, and we'll be nice and let him make it several feet, as we edge out into the hall to give him a quick shot from behind with the Seeker, thus taking him out of commission for a while. The reason we do this is if we hadn't, eventually, when the target begins to head in our direction, so too would we see the return of the guard, spoiling our kill opportunity. If you don't have the Seeker 1, you can still do this, but you may have to wait a couple of rotations of both the target and the guard, as eventually they will fall out of sync, and at some point she'll be making her way down the hall while the guard is elsewhere. But in our case, the guard is enjoying an impromptu purging of his lunch, and the target is heading our way. Keep out of sight until the target passes just beyond the door and slip into the hall. Now, just before she makes it to the corner, inject her with the virus and quickly get back into the stairwell. With the first target dead, we'll head back downstairs to the morgue, retracing our steps the way we came in while avoiding being spotted by the doctor. Once back in the staff area, use another key hacker on the door on the right, cross the room, hop through the window and climb up the pipe to return to the courtyard area. The second target should be in the restaurant area at this point. Unfortunately, we were unlucky here as the target's rotation has him just leaving the room where we can easily kill him, meaning we'll need to wait around for a cycle until he returns. Speaking of things that are annoying, we also have this stupid guard. He seems to trigger to enter the same room where we want to kill the target once we get close to him, and he seems to feel perfectly entitled to just stand there forever waiting to have a long talk with the target before he'll ever leave. As I have zero interest in indulging him in this kind of behavior, we're gonna go ahead and drop our emetic gas mine in the corner behind him here. But we're not gonna detonate it just yet, as the target may still be a couple minutes until he gets back here. While we're waiting around, it'll at least afford 47 some time to catch up on a little e-reading. But soon, the target will eventually sit down on the couch with his own tablet. This is usually followed by him heading back to the secluded area, making this an ideal time to blast the guard with a fart cloud of catharsis. Once the target has entered the little cubicle, as long as nobody seems to be staring directly at us, head around behind him and give this prick a little prick. Down. With both targets down, all that's left to do is head for an exit.
With that, we've completed method number one with Silent Assassin suit only in 8 minutes and 16 seconds. Next up, method number two, in which we'll be going in with zero mastery required as we will be bringing along in nothing at all. Alright, so once again, we'll skip the cutscene and start like we would any day, by getting out of bed and popping into the bathroom, though this time just to grab a pair of scissors. We're going to need the hospital director's disguise, so to that end, we'll head into yet another bathroom, knock out its current occupant, and toss his body in the closet. The director will be making his way back towards us shortly, and when he's standing in front of the window, just toss the pair of scissors at the wall here and we'll lure him in. As he enters the bathroom, close the door behind him, knock him out, hide his body as well, and most importantly, take his disguise. Wearing this, we can now access most areas of the hospital without issue. And as soon as this enforcer moves out of the way, we can pop into the director's office to grab his keycard. Now back into the hall before the enforcer turns around, we'll return to the stairwell and head all the way down to the bottom floor. Here in this room, we'll take a right and head to the far end where we'll use the director's keycard to unlock the cold storage to free Agent Smith. After a brief conversation, he'll give us the master keycard, which we'll take and use right away on the door to the stem cell lab, where we can again retrieve the two hemorrhagic syringes. With these in hand, just like with method number one, we'll head up to the floor above. The target should hopefully be again standing at the far end of the hall. Feel free to get up close and say hello. Yes, she may stare us down with a bit of a suspicious eye for a moment, but eventually she'll make the mistake of turning her back on us, allowing us to stick her with the needle. From here, we'll just make our way back to the restaurant to bring about an end to things for the second target. We have been lucky as he's just stepped into his little cubicle. Sadly, however, this also means we're going to have to sit through the entire conversation with the dickhead guard. So, if you're at all curious what it is they talk about... Um... <clears throat> so, Doc, uh... That enhancement treatment we discussed... Well, it's uh, kind of weird to be saying this, given the nature of my work, but I really think you should think twice about this enhancement therapy. It's all still pretty experimental. Mr. I've made up my mind about Jason it, Doc. Portman. I gotta go big. Please come to the hospital Real entrance. Real big. You're a young doctor and will escort I have you been around the block, so let that me give you a bit of advice for Mr. you. Jason Size Portman. Size isn't everything. A doctor will escort is. you to your All the guys are getting it done. Please really? proceed to the hospital I didn't know entrance. That. And they are not having any problems? I mean, performing their duties, so to speak. On the contrary, Doc. They're real beasts, all of them. Always at it, day and night, really competing to see who's biggest. Wow. I mean, I don't judge, of course. I mean, this one time in medical school... Uh, but, I mean, I was pretty drunk, of course. You're losing me, Doc. But can you get me those steroids or not? I don't want to be the smallest guy in the room. Steroids? Oh, steroids. I, I thought you were talking about something else. Losing me again, Doc. What did you think I was talking about? Uh, nothing. I I'll get you the damn steroids. Don't worry. I mean, I thought I was pretty clear, but... Well, you seem pretty fixated on guys, though. But, you know, that's just fine. This is a modern world we live in, and... Well, as far as I'm concerned, who you love is entirely up to you. Shut up. Well, there's no call for that, sir. I was just saying. Let me know when you got the meds for me. Two thousand years later. Well, with that never-ending conversation somehow against all odds finally having reached an end, piss off, Dexter. We can finally give him that booster shot he's been wanting. Oh, damn it. My bad. That was actually the full virus switch some reason, the moment you come in contact with it, you drop dead on the spot. Scary stuff indeed. Well, uh, now we know for next time. Okay, this part is by no means required, but I'm gonna go ahead and change back in 47 suit before we leave. All that's left to do now is exit the level. And with that, method number two is completed as well, this time with just Silent Assassin in 9 minutes and 9 seconds. So, there you go. That's been two different methods of killing elusive target number 23, the Surgeons. Originally, I was planning to include a third method, but given the kill restrictions in order to actually get 5 stars, uh, the run didn't really feel different enough for method number one to make it worthwhile. I'll give you a quick rundown, but even if we're being super generous at best, this could maybe be called method number 1.5. We'll start out in the morgue and bring along the Seeker 1 as our pistol, along with some key hackers. Also, I've smuggled the Silver Baller into the morgue as well. As soon as the mission begins, skip the cutscene, but don't stop hiding until the Doctor has his back turned. Once clear, get up and head straight for the stairs. One at the top, quickly pop out and tag the guard with the Seeker. Now head downstairs to grab the syringes as well as the briefcase, along with this screwdriver. You can retrieve the Silver Baller if you want, doesn't really matter. Basically anything smuggled in works, so long as it provides us with the briefcase to distract the target, who should just now be leaving the main surgery room. 
Drop the briefcase here so she'll hopefully spot it. If she doesn't, just toss a screwdriver near it to have her come and investigate. Get out of sight for a moment, and when her back's turned, give her the job. From here on out, you can basically follow the exact same steps from method number one to kill the other target, and again, complete the mission with Silent Assassin suit only. So, yeah, a little less variety of kill types for this target than we're normally used to, but hopefully this video has nonetheless been helpful or at the very least enjoyable. If so, don't forget to leave a like down below and let me know which method was your favorite in the comments. Maybe even share it with your friends. Lastly, if you haven't already, do subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new videos in the future. Anyway, that's enough for now. This is Infinite Omega. I've been Black Deatha, and this is Elusive Target number 23, both repeatedly killed by being hoisted by their own petards. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. You have yourselves an amazing day. Goodbye.